Yeah, it's like, 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 it's Okay, so we just said, well, let's just do it. Well, we'll just do it today. Would you wish in your own home? Just Did you like that box shirt? I don't know. 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 about some real fun times, uh, those times that we are stressed, we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about some growth also, so that's what uh, our, this, there's not a ton of slides, there's really only two slides that'll be up this week, a lot of talking, so if you're kind of a note taker, uh, the notes will roll, uh, roll from mine and Joe's lips, uh, if you need us to repeat something, and we also want you to chime in this week, uh, because Joe and I only know Joe and I. Okay, so I can kind of speak for sevens. Joe can speak for twos, but we're still, we're not, you know, we're not the only sevens, we're not the only twos, and we'd like to hear from y'all some, so just feel free to chime in on, on like, moments, because we're going to talk, but I, I don't know what it's like to be you when we talk about numbers. So, again, feel free to chime in on that. So we'll start off with our stress. So these are our stress arrows. Uh, I've been talking to people over the last few weeks, and some of you think, like, Maybe your stress number is just something else, but there's a, there's a pattern to it. Uh, so if your number, you pick your number, you figure out what your number is. So if you are two, so Joe, if you are two, in stress, you go to eight. Now stress is a loosely defined stress word, uh, but I think it best defines how it happens. Uh, this could be like surprise. And I think me and Joe kind of like that one. It's a surprise element that pops up on you and, oh my goodness, what's happening? And this is how you respond to that, how you're going to respond in that moment. So a two becomes an eight. Two is going to become an eight, and we'll talk about that in a second. That's, that's just a natural shift. Um, and, and so for me, seven, I'll become a one. This is good for me because I need, sometimes you need stress in your life to function, right? Because I'm all over the place, scattered, fun, Jesse. But in college, when it was paper time, when it was time to sit down and write the paper, I didn't want to sit down and write the paper. So you can see me getting stressed and becoming a one who is organized and can sit down and make the list and make it happen. He becomes stressed and can figure that out and he can make, make it happen. Does that make sense? So stress isn't a bad thing every time. But again, in that surprise moment, uh, if my son is on the edge of a cliff, I'm going to be very stressed. <laughs> and I will become very critical and I'm gonna jump in there one style. So here, here is uh, one of the books that we've read. This is called The Wisdom of the Enneagram. It's the first one we read, uh, big group. And I just wanna read a couple of little moments about a one. So this is me reading the one chapter, okay? Reading a one chapter. And uh, they have a test at the beginning of the book that I took for every number. Uh, it's the scores out of 75. For a seven, I scored 72 out of 75, okay? I'm a seven among sevens, for sure. <laughs> But for a one, I scored a 35 out of 75. So I'm, I'm about 50%, like I'm not that much of a one. But when I'm reading the one thing, one chapter, there's so many things I can relate to because that's who I am in stress. And this is one of them that I just, just thought was amazing and, and I just want to open with this so you can kind of have an understanding of, of what's going on here. Uh, so that, this little section right here, and I just wrote stress here. And every time I had a moment, <laughs> Where I, where I was like, that's me when I'm stressed, that's me when I'm stressed, because I become this one. 
and I'm very stressed, and, and this is how I respond. Once, there are four languages that psychologists talk about, we talk to people, okay? So there's adult to adult, there's child to child, there's child to adult, and adult to child. Those are the four languages. One's primary language is adult to child. It's adult to child, okay? And it's very belittling. And that's their primary language because they're, they, they, they got it figured out. And they're smart, and they got it, and they're critical of others, and they did it right. So adult to child, so when I get stressed, I become a preacher. The preacher voice. <laughs> Leslie calls it my preacher voice, and it's, it's adult to child. And I'm making, Leslie is the biggest target of this, I make Leslie feel six years old when I'm talking. Because I, and then when I come up, and then she's like, you got a really good argument, and if it sounds great, and everything you presented was well thought out, just like a one would have it. But you made me feel this big, and I want nothing to do with it. I got to present it in a different way. And man, that rung so true. And, and Rachel is another person that received this from me. If I'm stressed and work job related, Rachel, I end up talking little to them. And I, and I don't want to talk little to them. So this was one of my biggest cures of figuring out when I get stressed, I got to stop talking to people this way. And then here's, here's my, my other one that really rung true. Uh, stress, it says average ones are highly sensitive to criticism. Uh, and then when I'm stressed and you're criticizing me, I get really defensive. And so if I'm in a, a, a new moment, I can, I can become high, highly sensitive to that. And then your negative feedback from others feels extremely threatened. And I become the preacher and I start talking down to you. And it's like, man, Jesse got really offended and he started offending everyone else. That's my go-to. It's like, oh, you come at me, I'm going to come back at you. And I just... Those truly resonate with me as the one. And so that's just kind of how the stress thing works, and that's what we want to explain before we start rolling through all this. Joe, you want to add anything? Yeah, I was going to say that it's an unconscious move. Yeah, yeah, for sure. From, I mean, and that's, that's why we use kind of the word surprise. It's, it just catches you off guard, and you just kind of start heading there. Um, and that's why it's, it's, it's so dangerous, because when you, when you get caught off guard, that's when you just un unconsciously you start heading to these, these kind, of, kind of bad aspects of these numbers. And... Um, and sometimes when we identify with that number and live in stress long enough, we can start to identify that as kind of our number. And that's not truly our number. It, it's, a, it's an unhealthy place. And so it's, we, we see this sometimes in people when, when they, they're, just, they're an unhealthy number and it's only because they're living in that stress number instead of really who they really are. And they just they, they need to work out some things. And so... Just a couple things there. So that this is kind of an unconscious move, and boy, if you linger there long enough, you might even start identifying with that number, and, 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 and really, that's, a, that's an unhealthy place. Anyway. So last week, when you were in your churches, you, you may have felt really connected to that, but that might be your stress number you're sitting in, and you don't realize it. You're just like, I feel really connected to this, because that may be your stress number. It may be ringing bells, but if we start talking about, like, just for example, if you were sitting with the sixes, when we talk about how your stress number is three, and when we describe it here in a minute, if you're like, that doesn't really ring a bell. I don't feel like I stress and go to three. Well, maybe you're just kind of sitting in your stress number and you're really a nine. And you come down there when you're stressed and you feel that. Does that make sense? Because a lot of us live in stress. A lot of us really resonate with that number. Uh, your teenagers, uh, your kids probably live in stress. Uh, what we, I did an Enneagram thing at college at, at Harding one time with Shannon. And the, all these kids, all the, all the people in there were saying, what they were, and, and I was just like, probably not, probably not, probably not, because they're probably all their stress numbers, right? Because college is stressful. So just as we go through this, just kind of think like, do you ever experience that stress number? If not, then you may be living in your stress number and just be open to maybe shifting your number a little bit, because that's the whole, the whole journey of these 13 weeks is at the end, hoping that you figured out your number at the end. We don't necessarily need you to have it figured out right now. It's a, it's a journey to find it yourself. For sure. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so we'll start uh, with ones. We'll roll with ones. Uh, so again, uh, my one in my life is my wife. So she knows when she's in class, I talk about her. So ones, <laughs> ones go to four in stress. Ones go to four in stress. Uh, this is the, the, the methodical ones suddenly become moody in an irrational four. The arrogant self-image of a four might lead ones to flatter themselves. So they might feel perfect here, and when they come down here, they feel even more perfect because they're unique perfect now. Uh, so this is their, <laughs> they, they have shifted and they have become here, and this is also a, 
uh, I, I, you know, the, sad, the sadness. Remember we talked about it being happy, a joy and sadness from the movie uh, Inside Out. This is sadness, so they can dwell in melancholy there. One can go and just be sad there, uh, sends them to a stress. Leslie used to joke about being bipolar, and that's because it makes sense, because we'll talk about it in a second, but she swings from seven in her health, and she can swing all the way to four, and all the way to four, because this will be her. And she'll make a huge swing from joy to sadness. Um, so that's, that's a one. So twos, and I'm speaking from personal experience, we're, we're needy. Uh, we have, at, at basic, we have need for those pats on the back. We need that approval of people, and we need that. Well, we can kind of, in those stress times, and, and I'll, I'll redefine that just a little bit, when we have fully exhausted um, everything we can try as our own number, and we're still getting a little stressed, uh, we, that's when we kind of head that way. We, we're not getting the results that we want from being the number that we are, and so we're getting a little stressed out, and we, we head towards that. So I'm not getting, uh, the attention or the pats on the back or or the the approval uh, from all my hard work and hey I keep helping I keep helping I keep helping or and nothing nothing's changing here I'm not getting anything from this and I start to get a little stressed I had to eight and eight is is so not me when I when I'm healthy uh, because that, that's this confrontational they're okay with the argument I'm strong and so the, you get you get this all of a sudden I get stressed out and well, look out, because then I have to just display that I'm powerful. And usually for me, that, that only happens when it's just really to the point where I'm about to explode. <laughs> so I, I, keep, I keep it in mostly, and I, I, I keep it handled here. I don't end up in stress too often to where it's just, you know, explosion. But um, you, try, you try and keep it in a little bit. But when I hit the eight, I want you to know it. It's like I'm powerful, and I'm going to let you, I'm gonna let you know about it. It, sometimes it manifests itself in just passive aggressiveness. And, and that's not quite as, you know, uh, out there and it doesn't kind of stand out as much. But in, in extreme cases, you know, and I, no, I'm not going to say that this is me, but in extreme cases, um, violence, you know, for, for a two that is just not getting uh, what it's wanting from being a two, uh, they might head towards eight and head towards violence. And I, and I, want, to, I want you to think of it in these terms. Think of a think of Bible character, Martha. Uh, Martha's busy in the kitchen working. And what does she do? She looks around and what does she see? I'm doing all the helping. I'm doing all the working. What am I seeing? Mary. Yeah. Hey, what the, Jesus. And so she lashes out at both Jesus and Mary. Hey, what, what's up with this? That's not right. And so, you know, here's someone who's trying to be a two, trying to be helpful, and I get a little stressful because I'm doing all the work. And I'm not getting any notice for it. Nobody else is helping me out here. And all of a sudden, bam, she gets a little confrontational. I'm mean, even with Jesus, it seems. So, um, with twos, they had to hate and stress. Go ahead. All right, so threes, this is our inner triangle here. Uh, you'll notice that they're connected like this, the inner triangle. So these numbers are always connected, three, nine, and six. Uh, threes will head to nine it's in disintegration and stress. Uh, threes are our achieving, our out front person. Uh, we'll learn about this over the next few weeks, what numbers are assertive, what numbers are kind of withdrawn, a little more introverted. We'll talk about that some. Three is a very assertive character, likes to be in front, likes to take the lead on stuff. When it gets stressed out, and oftentimes what's going to stress it out is its emotions. Because Emot it's in the emotional, it's in this one, but the three doesn't know how to handle it. Three doesn't know how to handle his emotions very well, so emotions are going to stress the three. It's going to send them to nine. Nine is a withdrawn number. They're a pullback number. And so our very assertive three will step over to nine and want to step back. And uh, what it does is trying to figure out how to step away from its emotions. It wants to step away from them because it can't deal with it. So they're just they're on they're on the pullback from it. Uh, all the hatred and hostility that they have developed for competitors is directed at themselves because they come up to nine. Remember, nine has has that anger a little bit towards itself, a little bit to the outside. So it has all this competitiveness. When it comes up to nine, it kind of shifts to itself, and it becomes angry at itself. As a brief. So fours, they're they're kind of a little bit aloof. Uh, they're kind of off to them, <coughs> off to themselves, um, and what they're trying to do is trying to get a little bit of attention by being unique, right? So when that's not playing out, um, they seek that elsewhere. Uh, when that's when they're not getting their needs met by being a four, and it kind of stresses them out a little bit. 
uh, this whole I'm unique thing doesn't play out. And so they head to somewhere that gets a little bit more attention, and that's a two. And so they try to get that, that uh, attention by, hey, I'm, I'm helpful. Notice me, I'm being helpful. And <coughs> they, they try to establish their identity uh, through this love and attention of others, which is really just looking for sympathy and support. Uh, and so what they're doing, they're trying to get that, uh, well, what, the, the, uh, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the pride, um, not the pride, the passion, it was a new B word. The, the passion of a four is envy. And they, they want something that they don't have. They're, they're looking out there for that. And when they're not, like I said, when they're not getting that fed, well, I'm, gonna, I'm heading to two, and you're, you're gonna see that I'm, I'm indispensable. I'm, I'm, uh, you, you need me. And so I'm gonna work really hard, and you're, gonna, you're going to, um, give me that what I've what I've been looking for, and so fours in their in their stress, they head to kind of an unhealthy two, where it's looking for those pats on the back. All right, uh, just a moment. Does anybody want to chime on the number that they are so far that we've said something about? They're like, I can relate. I want to say something. Chime in at all. <laughs> I want to make sure you have that opportunity. <laughs> we can do it again towards the end. So. Uh, all right, so our five. Our five, remember this is our investigator, this is our person who's in their mind. Our five is one of the withdrawn characters. They're a little retreat back, okay? Uh, a unique thing about a five is both of its numbers is connected to a very assertive numbers, very assertive numbers. But it's our most, probably our most withdrawn number initially. Uh, in stress, it goes to seven. It goes to seven. My, my, my best friend is the five, so I ask him all the questions before we come in here. I kind of ask him about, hey, what's, <laughs> is, this, is this right? Do you feel this? And he said, absolutely. So the five and stress will, will run over to seven because so a five a unique thing about them is like their their mind you just a giant tic-tac-toe grid they compartmentalize everything okay this is this section and it's weird for a five you know like when you have small world moments when you're like hey you go to church with such and such and not go to the gym with them and you're like whoa like for a five that, that's weird for them because my gym friends my gym friends are separate than my church friends my work friends are separate than my church friends all of these belong in their spots these don't overlap it, it, your your spouse will be like how come you never introduced me to such such well it wasn't important to introduce you to such and such because it's my compartments i have set up and so what they do is they have a compartment that's set they have a compartment that they go jump in that says i'm okay because sevens again we tell ourselves i'm okay and i'm happy so if I'm stressed out, I'm going to jump over my stressed out box. That's like a seven. It's going to, it's going to tell me I'm okay. I feel good. I'm great. I'm, let's go have fun. Let's just go have fun right now. Let's blow it off and have fun because I don't want to deal with the stress. That's kind of, that's kind of how their escape is. One of their boxes is a seven. And once again, I want to, want to frame these, it's kind of give it an idea in your mind. These are often seen as escape hatches. Yes. Um, uh, your stress is kind of how you escape or how you put off with, put off dealing with um, what you're what you're fate, currently facing, and so it, it's kind of just a way to to, to get away and, and postpone really kind of dealing with it. And so think of it as an escape hatch, or think of it as as uh, you know something that's a temporary fix uh, for your problems. And once again, remember we're, we're talking about don't it's a temporary thing. You don't stay there because that's it can be you know lead to pretty unhealthy place. Um, and sixes, there are loyal people. They're they're dutiful. They uh, they're you know um, they're going to stick with the with the organization or whatever, whether it be a family or whatever. But at their heart, they're they're our worst case scenario people as well. They have this this kind of basic fear, um, and it comes with a little bit of a, a lack of self esteem. Uh, they kind of when when they get stressed. They, they kind of head, they start looking for uh, any kind of other greater power. And, and you think of, of, of a loyalist and someone who's, who's looking to be loyal to something, when they're not getting that met as a six, um, they, they go looking for any other greater power, if, if you will, to be loyal to. Um, and they disintegrate uh, to a three. So, yeah, over here. So it's, it's the arrow, it's, it's pointing to the three there. And it becomes, they become success oriented and kind of like the way the three has this idea that um, you know, their, their passion is deceit so they're not always trying to be the best they just kind of want to look like they're the best so when we're talking about the unhealthy side of things 
when a, when a six starts heading towards a three, they're really uh, trying to get some of that uh, attention of uh, success oriented stuff, but it's based on deceit and they won't always do it in, in the best way. At this stage, uh, the sixes, they no longer pay attention to their, their deepest inner warnings. Remember, they're, they're all about, um, you know, worst case scenario and, and a little bit of safety and security. They have this, this fear that's driving them. But when they start heading towards three, uh, they might <coughs> start ignoring some of those warnings. And then they become capable of a little deceit. Um, kind of like, you know, when, when, a, when we talk about a three and they're, they're trying to present themselves as... Um, this great achiever when they may not be that they just want you to think that so let, let's let's put it in, in this terms um, I think Peter in the Bible was probably a six and when he got under stress he fell back on a little deceit at least at one point we can see in the Bible uh, hey aren't you one of those uh, guys hanging out with a Jesus guy no <laughs> no not me um, and he did it three times all under stress you kind of see this, and we think he's probably, probably think he's a good, strong six, um, loyal, all that kind of stuff. But when it when it came, push came to shove, and he got a little stressed on his life. All of a sudden, the deceit pops up. So, kind of ignore those inner warnings and just did it to kind of save his own skin. And it, it, once again, this kind of escape hatch. This um, I, I'm doing it to to save myself type thing. So, six is head towards three. They become competitive. Or threes are competitive. Sixes can become competitive in that moment. Uh, and it doesn't feel like them, but if they're loyal to a team and all of a sudden you see your six rise up uh, in the stands and they're just yelling and you're just like, that, that can be your six. They're very competitive in the moment. Uh, so. All right, so our seven, this is me. Uh, so our sevens, we're scattered, we're all over the place, and it's weird that we become the problem. The perfectionist one, the, the the one that hones in on the details, the one that, how, how do I get there? Uh, because the, remember, I'm trying to escape pain. I don't want to be trapped in pain. I don't want to be trapped by whatever you're trying to trap me into, and it's going to stress me out. So, so you're going to try to trap me into something that I feel like is darkness. It makes sense then if I'm going to one, and ones want to avoid the darkness at all costs. They don't want to be stuck and what someone considers evil or dark. So you can see how, the, how we're very connected in that sense. So we come over here and I get critical of other people, man, I can point the finger like nobody can point the finger because I can blame someone else when I come to one. All my mistakes and all my flaws and all the things I'm getting trapped in is other people trapping me in it. So I come to one and I point the finger and I become critical of them. Uh, they say that, that the step to one is an attempt to regain control over one's own emotional world. Because we're in the head triad. We struggle with emotions that aren't good, that aren't, that aren't joy. Anything outside of joy I struggle with. And I don't know how to deal with it, and it stresses me out. And one is a good way to slide over it and try to get a grasp on it. I'm trying to get a grasp on it. So you can see how those are really connected. So you got your eight up here, and uh, usually pretty self-confident. You know, no, no, no trouble with uh, confrontation and, and pretty sure of themselves. But they can, under stress, come more like a five. And the five is not going to be out there and, and uh, uh, you know, confrontation and all that. The five is going to stand back and they're going to kind of get it kind of in their mind what's going on here. More secretive. Um, and it, it may be a little, bit, a little bit fearful. And so the, the passion of, a, of an eight is, is lust. This, um, you know, just, just trying, trying to get, um, not having enough. But at five, they, they might even uh, begin to, to brood a little bit, um, doubt a little bit, um, and, and, and ponder. And those, those, don't, those don't sound like negative things, but um, under stress, what they're what they're doing is they're they're not being their eight and they're moving into something that's that's that can be unhealthy in the sense that these fears arrive uh, not ar arise and for an eight when you when you think of what an eight wants you to see them as it's powerful I'm strong and so this fear of losing this power 
is, is what they start thinking about and, and start fear, above all, losing this power. And so they, they get and they start, start thinking about that and that just gets in a real unhealthy place. And eights don't typically go down quietly. <laughs> um, and so you're going to have some trouble there. Uh, they're, they're going to be, be, be loud. I mean, if you try and force it, and you know, it's going to get ugly. And so um, it's it's hard. And, and, and I know we're 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 kind of focused on a lot of kind of negatives right now. Stresses. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're def def definitely definitely stresses, and I mean that's that's why we call them. Uh, Stresses and uh, just another one to throw out here. This is this is kind of a basic survival mechanism for us. We, I want to kind of throw out a few words there. I've used escape hatch, and we've used you know when you, when you've kind of played out your numbers as much as you can. Uh, but think think of survival mechanism as well. It, it's it's kind of what we do. We temporarily go there to uh, put off, postpone uh, dealing with something. And when it gets real unhealthy for an eight, uh, they can they can head towards five and just kind of. Uh, like I said, bring it in and start fear. <clears throat> All right, so back in our triangle, three, nine, six. Our nines move to six in stress, so our nines are our peacemakers. Peacemakers at heart want to be a peacemaker, okay? At all costs, we want to make peace. So what's going to stress them out when there's not peace? It's going to start stressing them out. They're going to try to make peace, and what they're going to do is the first question they're going to ask in the moment of making peace, if two people are arguing or there's an argument going on, it's like, where do my loyalties lie? Where do my loyalties lie? Six is the loyalist. So you can see that's how the nine and the six connect. It's like that makes sense. He's gonna slide down, where do my loyalties lie? And he's gonna pick a side. And the best thing, the best thing sixes have as a defense and nines when they move to six is who's the higher powers that be that say that this is the way it is? What does the law say about it? Well, let's just call the police. You know, like what does the law say about it? And that's what we're going to do. So nines want the peace. And they're going to slide to six and be loyal to the most peaceful strategy there is. Okay, so you can see they come out of their withdrawal moment and they kind of come fast and they're going to hold fast to what they feel is right. Because remember, six has got this righteous thing about it. Like, you know, one, six has both got a thing that's connected to the, well, what's right here? Where's my loyalties? Where do I lie? And we're going to make this right. And that's how nines are going to come down. And they've been like, just trying to make the peace. But when the peace is no longer, this is where they got to be. And stress, they're going to slide down to six and figure out where their loyalties truly lie. So that's the negatives. <laughs> oh, that was a downer. Jesse, though, that, that wasn't a whole lot of fun. No, that wasn't that fun. No. Nobody likes to talk about the bad things. Clearly. Ugh. That was awesome. Anybody got anything they want to add? Anybody resonate, just resonate with them? Maybe you want to chime? You guys see yourself slide into different spots in stress? You I, I definitely, like, being a six, I definitely slid to the three. Uh, senior year of high school and stuff like the grades are finally getting put in about to graduate like I was really stressed out then and I saw myself wanting to be like the best student like so kind of exploited kind of cut some cut some corners and stuff like there and like used some lower and like I, I was in non high up classes to get my GPA higher so I could become like a, the honor student like an, an honor student All right don't so, graduate like, with honors and right but Dalton didn't take like all his AP classes, you right. know, that kind of thing. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so just like the show. But Dalton gets to say he graduated with honors. That's right. That's right. It was just that loyal, it was just like that achievement thing. It's like, well, I graduated with honors. Right. But I didn't. That's good. That's good. I thought it was interesting what you had to say about uh, Peter uh, moving over to save himself. Isn't that true with every one of those? When you move to a stress point, yeah, that, that's what we're saying. It's a survival mechanism, is what that what I that mean, does. The uh, yeah, the example of Peter. I mean, yeah, there, there's quite often we're all going to fall into that. It's it's especially uh, susceptible for you know for those who with with that number. So so with six, uh, you know, it's it was uh, the the idea of deceit came naturally, you know, under stress that might. Whereas you know, some of us may choose other paths under stress initially, um, you know, the six, it seems like he went straight there uh, as a survival. But yeah, we we all and, and like I said, these these are these are not these are these uh, surprise times in our lives when definitely, definitely we kind of get survival. caught off guard and we do it um, unconsciously. Uh, we don't make a conscious effort to say, hey, I'm going to move this number in in, in stress. It kind of catches us off guard, and that's why I want to talk about this next section. 
which is, you got the next slide here, which is our growth. We've, uh, we've labeled it growth. You'll see it uh, health. You'll see it as security. Um, you'll see it as integration. Um, lot, lots of different terms from whatever book you're reading. But we like the idea of growth because, um, <clears throat> well, <coughs> whereas stress is an unconscious decision, our growth is 100% a conscious decision. We decide we're headed there. We're, we're going to do better. We're going to be better. Um, it's, it's as if we're, you know, we're saying, I want to show up in my life um, you know, more fully. I want to, um, you know, I want to let go of my old ways and my old habits. I'm making a choice to move in this direction. And, um, you know, I'm willing to just be with the truth wherever that is, uh, but I want to grow with it. So it, it's, a, it's a conscious choice saying this, this is something I'm going to try to do. Whereas the stress, it hits us and kind of catches us off guard and it's a survival mechanism and, and it's kind of where we go without really thinking. This takes the choice and and so you know while physically we don't have a whole lot of choice over growth spiritually we do spiritually we have a choice over we have to consciously say i'm going to grow and so that's why we kind of chose growth and so we're going to look through the numbers there um <clears throat> and we'll, for, we'll, spend a whole, we'll spend a whole week on spiritual growth even because of how important that is but this is just a quick mm -hmm. glance so ones will move to seven uh, they can let go of their schedule. They can let go of the things that hold them to so rigid uh, and be a little more spontaneous, be a little more open. Uh, this says, it says, the overstrained, controlled one must learn to relax and be happy and chill out. Uh, and that's how they'll grow. That's a... Uh... Easier said than done. Yeah, I mean, with, with all of these. I mean, it, it's, it's a choice. It's a choice, and, and, and it's a... Uh... It, it's something that takes time and it takes maturity um, because it, it's easier for Je Jess and I when we get together. It's easier for us to talk about our stress because boy, those those are kind of the the markers in our life. And we go, oh man, I remember when I failed this, you know, and this happened, and boy, I went to eight, you know. It's easier for us to talk those. It's a little bit harder for us to, to find those times because, like I said, it's a it's a. Um, Joe, Joe actually couldn't recall any times he goes to four. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm not healthy at all. I've never been healthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So, so two. Um, once again, our, our passion is pride, and so this, this prideful kind of self-deceptive two becomes more nurturing. You think of the four, and the four is more uh, self-nurturing and emotionally aware. Uh, when I want to be a more healthy two, that's what I, I go for it, and so I look like a more like a healthy four uh, intentionally. Um, I start paying attention to my own brokenness. Um, I, I realize that, you know, like fours, they want to, they want to be unique. They want to say, I am unique. Uh, I'm something special. And when I, as, as a two, make that effort to grow, I see myself as, as something that's, that's broken, but also redeemed. And that makes me special. And so I stop doing things just so that I'll get pats on the back. I'll stop doing things just to be noticed. But I'll start helping because I want you to be helped. I want to do something for you and not just for the thanks that I expect in general. And so uh, that's kind of a more healthy move. Uh, I, I view you as people, not as, well, I do this and I get a pat on the back. And so I start looking at myself and realize, hey, I am special because of what God has done for me and what he's done for you. I'm going to help you out. And so anyway, tell me twos. Uh, our three, for some reason, arrows kind of messed up, but that should be like there. This is like a double arrow. But anyways, that's there. Three goes to six. Uh, so threes. Uh, our, our threes are, are the a one man show. Remember, they do it themselves. They can accomplish it all. They so what 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 feels like natural growth? They're coming over and being a six, a team player. Uh, our sixes are committed are committed to their communities. They're committed to the groups. Uh, threes have a hard time trusting that someone else can take care of it. Threes will just like I'll handle it myself. So sliding over to six and becoming loyal to some things, having some groups that you believe in and trusting in, will have a lot of growth. 
Um, uh, one thing I thought it was cool is uh, it says that it says, be, but faithfulness and commitment, especially during thick and especially thin of a six, is only possible to uh, the only possible way to overcome and grow. So it's just like that's the only way to beat that stuff is to come over here and to learn to start depending on people. It's the only way you're going to get past of I can do it myself. And especially with the three, they want to they want to look good, and they want to uh, to maybe uh, cut those corners, but but when they truly, truly give, uh, that comes out for them. And that, that's kind of cool, that's kind of cool. So the four, you know, they're, 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 uh, their passion is envy. They're always looking for, you know, something that they don't have, but, but in health. Um, and when they're making that decision to grow as a, as a healthy four, you know, they've, they've, they've kind of had some turbulent times or, and, you know, they become more objective and principled. Um, they've, uh, well, you see on the, on the Arrows here, they had to want. And what are what are our wants? They they know this black and white, right and wrong. They're very well, I guess the word we've already used it, it's principled. And this uh this subjectivism of the uh, of the four is not quite uh, there. What they go for is is the more the, the like I said, the principle. Uh, the idealization of a one, that I am right. And the one's kind of dealing with uh, this anger, and um, I want I want you to I want to show you that I'm right, and I'm doing what is right. And the idealization of the one helps the four to a healthy self acceptance that yes, you too can make the right choices, that you too can do what's right, instead of just always kind of kind of questioning that. So going to the one for the four means to allow objective criticism. I uh, remember when Jesse was talking about you know when he ones in stress doesn't doesn't handle that objective criticism really well he sees it as just criticism you know and then gets real defensive well for a for a four they can see that as objective criticism and they are not crushed by it like they would be if they were just a, a regular four whereas you know the regular four is going to not like the uh, attention or the the negative but when they get a little more healthy and they choose to grow they can handle the criticism because they realize the objective nature of it. So, look at fours. All right, so our fives, remember our fives are in our head, they're in the thinking triad, they're the ones that are investigating. They, they want to be in their mind, they don't want to be out in the world with people, you know, it's too peopley out there, that idea, that's a five for sure. They're, they're, this is, they like to be themselves, and so, what would be good growth for them? To assert themselves and put their knowledge, they have a ton of knowledge, to put their knowledge into practice and assert themselves is the best way for them to grow and they will become an amazing, healthy ape who can challenge somebody without offending people. They can challenge people and, and challenge them to grow because they have the knowledge behind whatever they're saying. So you can see how that can be so, so good for them, so healthy. Just when we become the healthy versions of these other numbers with, that we're carrying our number into, it's just so good. It's so good for the world because we're, we're consciously making this effort. And so you can see how good that could be for a five to say, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna challenge people to just do better with the knowledge that I have. And so putting, putting their knowledge into practice is how they'll grow. So our six, they're once again, they're that, that worst case scenario, they're pessimistic at, at, at times. Um, they become, well, when, when you think about this kind of worst case scenario, that's not, that doesn't sound very relaxing. That sounds like they're kind of always on guard for, oh, what could go wrong? Well, in health and when they choose to grow, where do they head? They head over here to our nine, which, yeah, it's peaceful. There, there's, there's, there's not as many worries about that. They're, they're a little bit more relaxed and optimistic about things, not so much worried. Um, kind of this, this calm composure of a nine. You know, the nines, they're, they're, not, they're not getting all riled up about stuff when, when a six is healthy. Uh, they're heading over there and kind of having a, a little more calm composure about things. <clears throat> and that is the best medicine for a six is fear. Uh, that, that, that's just going to be awesome for them. And I want you to think about, once again, going back to our, our six that I talked about, Peter. Um, think, about, think about everything that was going on around him and that was cause for fear and stress when he's in that boat. But when he focused on Jesus and he said, you know, this is, this is important. He's calm, and he steps out on the water, and there's not a problem. 
Now when he takes his eyes off of that and he gets a little stressed out about things and then he thinks, but up until that point, <laughs> what you saw was, you know, here's someone who's, who's they call. You know, here, here's, here's a six that they, uh, they grew. That, that's, a, that's a high point in Peter's life until he sings. But, you know, we got that. All right, so the seven. Um, again, we're scattered, so it makes sense why we would go to one. It also makes sense why we would go to five, a focused thinker. So I'm thinking about everything at all moments, and I remember the butterfly got 12,000 eyes for everything. But fives are focused thinkers. Um, so it's very healthy for us to come here. Uh, you can see why I'm trying to avoid fear. I'm trying to avoid the pain, and the fear of pain. I'm trying to avoid that. So to come down here and to be able to think about it, to be able to dwell in it, to be able to, to absorb it and know that I'm okay, to know that I'm okay when I come down here and think about it is good for me. Uh, I just out of time, but I, I have a story I'd like to share at some point about that. Uh, but going, stopping, and allowing the pain to set in and you deal with it is growth. You have to stop. You, you just can't keep going and being scattered with it. If you deal with the seven stuff, you got to stop and let the pain set in and deal with it as a five would and just focus and think about it. So our eights, they're, uh, like I said, they can be controlling. Uh, they're, 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 uh, passion is, is lust so that this lustful controlling eight they can become more um, open-hearted and caring like a healthy two you know the defense uh, power of a two uh, is sorry the two's defense uh, re glasses would help here the one that got me up here diffuse twos diffuse the power of eights oh, defense my goodness so twos diffuse the power of eights um, they uh, they want to help and nourish, and they want to help protect. And this is all for healthy reasons, not for to show you that I'm strong. It's I, I really want to be helpful. I want I want to well, let's let, like I said, nourish. And so they want to encourage this this softer side when when they choose to grow and when when they choose to step out and say I want to um, not just be strong so that I look strong, but I want to help other people and I want to uh, nourish other people. They no longer want to rule but they want to use their, their power and their abilities to heal. And uh, once again, these are, these are uh, conscious decisions to grow. Uh, to be weak and vulnerable and tender is the greatest heroic thing an eight can do. That's pretty cool. It's hard. All right, so our nine, slothful nines, uh, just go with the flow nines. <laughs> Remember, they're kind of withdrawn. How would they grow? How, what, would, what would be the thing to grow? Becoming a three and goal oriented. Uh, having su success stories would help them grow. Sliding down into a three and deciding to achieve and grow through some success is what, how they're gonna grow the best. Uh, you know, just making that purposeful choice of setting up goals for themselves and getting outside of the mundane uh, day to day that they may go through and then deciding to become goal oriented and get, and get that three going. I wanted to kind of wrap it up with there's a, there's a lot to be learned from where we go in stress and where we go for growth. Um, it, it helps us to know ourselves and to know our tendencies so that we can be better prepared to treat people like, like Christ would treat people, so that we can have relationships that are, that are, uh, that are good. We must you know, be, learn to be sensitive to what builds us up and also especially the things that, that tear us down. Um, don't hear from this that stress is, is always bad. What Just speaking from a two, um, sometimes I need to stop trying to, um, you know, be Mr. Mr. Helpful and, and, and uh, you know, try to get you to like me. And sometimes I need to get things done. Sometimes I need to step up and, and say, no, this is, this is what needs to happen. And so stress is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we can gain those good things from it, but that's not my number. I don't need to dwell in an eight. And so learn, you know, where you go in stress. Learn some of the uh, some of the warning signs of, of when your tendencies are to be stressed, and maybe you can head off some of those things. Um, but we don't need to repress that stress either, because as well, I mean, I, I like I like the use of uh, the Incredible Hulk. Uh, you remember the TV series when when the, he's either lifting the car, you know, under stress. 
I thought that was kind of a cool, uh, maybe that's way too old for y'all, but anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, all, all of a sudden he's he just, you know, he's under stress and, and, good, thing, and good thing came from that. Um, so we don't want to repress that. Um, but there's growth to be had as well. And it has to be intentional. And so learn, learn what it is to, to be the best you you can be. And that's, that's really where I want to leave it with you tonight. You don't want to be the other numbers. You want to be the best your number you can be. And so um, learn ways to grow and to avoid the, you know, the negative sides of, of the stress and, and what comes from that. Not the most fun class we've done for sure because it is a lot of things that you may feel not connected to, but I think this part is incredibly important to learning your number. I think your stress number is your telltale sign of who you are. Once you figure out your stress number, it's easy to kind of put it all together. Um, so I hope I hope it would it was informational for sure. I know it wasn't as fun. You know, we didn't have like an animal slide and all those cool things. Why are you about being fun? Joe, that's who I am. I just I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to entertain for sure. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, any any last comments? Because we kind of did the growth area. Did anybody raise today? Want to chime in? Want to say my number? I don't agree. I don't want to argue. I'll, I'll, I'll say I don't agree with my what I thought was my stress number, but I do okay. agree with my health number. It seems like I got I, I feel like I'm a nine, but I don't feel like I'm a loyalist ever. But I do feel like I'm a goal I'm a go getter and a goal getter. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm lost. So what Maybe you you, you, you kinda came in a little late, but that was the thing is what I was talking about last week is this this may be your real number. And you kinda experience the nine a lot because you're in the stress. Um, and you haven't experienced your health number a ton because you're just kinda like being normal you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? Anybody? Sell it once, sell it twice. Sold to Joe to close the park. Let's close it out. Well, God, thank you for loving us when we're stressed out and not all that good. Thank you for encouraging us and uh, guiding us into growth. Thank you for the opportunities to examine ourselves and, and uh, encourage each other. Father, I pray that as we, as we continue to, to dig into this stuff, that we will find ways to be more like, like your son. That's, that's what we want the world to see. With all the different messages we've talked about, you know, we want the world to see us as such this and such and such. That's really not um, our goal. We really let the world to see us as Christ and, and what he brings to this world. So help us to, to be his hands and feet wherever we go. And, well, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Appreciate you guys. Yes.